let me start with my agenda little bit introduction about me basics of clean core and then i have laid out some strategy i hope it will help and uh, before starting uh, you know the actual session i want to say thank you to the organizers organizers of abab conf and yeah and this uh, whole seminar abab conf is looking good and i'm following some sessions which are very good and recently thomas has given session from sap about steampunk on on premise and it set the stage for me also so the guys who are following from the you know starting they can you know uh, check some interesting things which i said about abap cloud also okay who am i so i'm from india so good evening india namaste india as i'm an sap techie uh, with 11 years of experience currently working in ey consulting as a senior consultant if i talk about my background i started my journey in plain abap then i learned workflow did workflow then jumped into webden pro then i also do industry specific stuff which is abap isu then abap on hana then bw on hana spend a little bit time in s4 hana developer as well and now i'm trying some stuff in btp so if you see my journey i'm following some flavors of abap i'm not covering everything but yes this is my journey if i talk about my hobbies uh, recently i become a father so spending time with my with my kid is my hobby i'm a movies and series addict also play cricket hang out with friends so these are my little hobbies which i'm doing currently and if you want to follow me if you want to connect with me then the linkedin link is also there so this is about me and if i say why am i presenting this session to you because i have worked on the ground level as well as i'm continuously following sap content and sap stuff i'm a bit of an observer rather than an actual contributor and i'm sorry for that so i'm i'm a silent observer observing everything and then i found this abap conf to show my stuff okay moving on so if you see here if you see this bodybuilder you say okay a healthy person so clean diet makes your body healthy in a similar way clean core makes your erp healthy clean core is not a one time activity it's a journey so whatever we are going to discuss it's not a one time task that you do and go away you have to continuously adapt your system with respect to clean core the way we are doing with our body we need to do the same stuff with our erp as well okay so let me talk about some basics what is clean core why it is needed so what it is basically uh, avoid this typo it is clean digital core so i just write clean digital so it's a methodology where extensions are kept strictly separate from sap standard and this is not something which is new now we got this catch phrase which is clean core but we were trying to do it from a long time some of us were successful some of us like modifying sap standard which hampers a lot of stuff during implementation upgrades so the idea is of clean core is to strictly kept your developments separate extension separate from sap standard then leverage key user in app a web cloud on stack side by side extensions to its full extent as per customer need so uh, some of you have already worked on in app extensions in your project a web cloud has been recently introduced in on prem system it was there in the s4 hana cloud or btp abap so now it's introduced introduced in on premise so it means that we can apply the abap cloud techniques into the on premise system as well so that we can keep our core clean so why we are doing it because current developments have caused problems during upgrades or performance issues anyone wants to be cloud ready so there is a lot of discussions and events are happening that you have to transform your system into the cloud readiness or go into the cloud but yes that journey is a bit long or it could be hectic as well if we don't follow this properly the clean core methodology then reduce tco from custom code point of view 
So if we apply the right principles of Green Core, then we definitely reduce our test efforts, reduce our adaption efforts, and yeah, even the service providers, they can offer the projects at the fixed price. So there will be no too much customizations or a lot of stuff that we are doing with SP or SPDD during the upgrades that can also, you know, we can save our efforts. And then the last one is able to infuse innovations at a fast rate on changing business requirements. What does it mean? It means, for example, you got a new, uh, got a new requirement. Let's say you want to integrate your system with the external software like Teams or WhatsApp or maybe Zoom. So then you cannot make holes, a lot of holes into your ERP core. You want to, you know, make ERP in such a way that it can adapt those innovations in a proper way. There we have, we have uh, you know, BTP comes into the picture. So if we write stable code into the backend, then it will help infusing these innovations. So this is about what is clean core, why it is needed. Then how of clean core, how, how are we gonna do this? So let's start with follow SAP guidelines. The first policy is like zero modification policy. If we strictly try to avoid modifications, I know it's hard, but if we try to avoid it, then it will save a lot of efforts. Then if we leverage modern extension integration and automation options provided by SAP, then it will help. Then back to standard, there are a lot of customized process that customers have built for themselves. But if we seriously move into S4 and look into the standard apps which are provided by SAP and they are continuously updating new apps as well. Then maybe for those custom processes, we can choose standard apps provided by SAP. Then track SAP technology updates. I know it's hard. There are a lot of stuff going on. A lot of personas have been introduced, but yes, if a consultant or if a, if a company or consulting company, or I would say customer follow these tech updates, then it will be easier for them to implement the clean core. Then the second point is coupling analysis for side-by-side -side approach. So these points are related to the migration. So I'm just highlighting them. So coupling analysis means, I mean, you need to decide what stays on on-premise, what stays, what will stay on BTP. So you need to do that coupling analysis. You need to retire your unused code. You need to re-platform as for a web cloud. Or maybe you can do a little bit of lift and shift with the custom code in case of migration converse, conversion to S4. This is the most difficult approach, I would say. But yes, analysis we can do. We can start with a little bit of it. And then once like we will become pro, then we can do the full migration. Then the third one is follow extension approach for Greenfield. Start with an app. If you can do implement things with in-app extensions, that would be great. Then the second one is ABAP Cloud slash ABAP Cloud. ABAP Cloud is recently introduced in S4HANA 2022. It was not there previously, but yes, we can do some flavors of ABAP Cloud in older versions as well in S4. That way I will tell you in further slides. Then if this will not suffice our requirements, then we can choose side by side and then classic extensibility is still available. It's not going to deprecate or something, but yes, it will be least recommended. Then the fourth one is use the whitelisted released APIs if possible. You will find SAP is updating these APIs in every version of S4. And you can also, also find it in API business up to, you know, to see the whitelisted released APIs. So try to use them because the innovations will happen into those APIs only in further upgrades and further versions. If you don't have whitelisted released APIs, then build wrapper APIs if standard are not available to minimize technical depths. So what, what it means by wrapper APIs, basically you can create an envelope. For example, you want to use a BEPI, right? You want to use any BEPI and those BEPIs are not released. Those are not whitelisted. Then you create a wrapper function module around it and you can release it. You can change the API state. You can cho choose the BAP language version of that particular function module which you're creating. Sorry, for RFC. And then you can call that BEPI inside it. Then the last one is 
keep a track of deviation from best practices. I have highlighted some best practices, but yes, it's quite hard to follow when we have too much of customization. So try to you know, have a track of those deviation. If you're deviating from this path, then you have to keep a note so that in future, if SCP will release something, then you can utilize it. You, you know like what you are doing if you have a deviation process in place. So this is how of clean core as an overview. Then I'm, I'm just, I'm saying it again, clean core, clean core. So I'm now I'm saying recommended CC approach for ISF. So I'm saying CC instead of clean core. Okay. So what will be the recommended approach? My assumptions are that business is on ECC or S4 HANA on-prem or private cloud edition, or they are planning to move to S4 HANA on-prem or private cloud edition. And S4 HANA on-premise versions plays a vital role in deciding when to use what for effective clean core strategy. This is, these are assumptions and these are like disclaimer, I would say. Okay, moving on to the next one. General rules. I'm just putting general rules here that we can utilize when we are working in the ERP system. If you see on the right-hand side, I mentioned some screenshots, okay? For example, if whitelisted API is available, as I said earlier also, then you can use it. If it is not available when you're working with customer, then you can also ask for it from SAP with the customer influence programs. Then the second one is wrapper APIs. I have explained it earlier also. You can create wrapper API. You can also choose whether you want to, which ABAP language version you want to, uh, to cre create these wrapper APIs. For example, ABAP for cloud development is the rel relevant version and it will enforce you to write restricted ABAP. You can also change the API state, whether you want to use in the cloud development or whether you want to use this in key user apps, basically key user extensions. So you can change this API state as well for these particular objects. Then, uh, as I said, restricted ABAP, if possible, if you can use, then ATC. ATC plays an important role. There are some variants which will help you while doing your developments. One is SAP underscore CP underscore readiness. ABAP cloud development default is available and quick fix is available. You guys have seen the session on ABAP quick fixes. I found it very fascinating and useful. So quick fixes will help you. Then the fifth one is you can't avoid modifying SAP systems, honestly, but do it gently. Don't write direct code, build custom baddies, wait for released ex extension points also. Because for example, you are doing an Im implicit enhancement in the system. It's not that easy that you will get rid of implicit enhancement. You are still modifying SAP system. So instead of writing direct code into the standard SAP code, you can create custom body for yourself. And when you will create a body, you will create a class and you can follow the restricted ABAP there. You can change the API state as well. Then exploit API business, free TA services if BTP into the picture. There are certain things which you cannot do into your ERP. They should be decoupled and put it into the BTP, whether you will choose wrap or cap, it's up to the business requirement or let's say the skills of the developers which you are having, then try with these first. Then the last one is break these rules, okay? Um, honestly speaking, I don't want to break rules, but if you are breaking, you should know what, why, and where are you breaking. Track the technical depth. This is very important because sometimes it's not that easy that you will follow all the rules properly. But if you are deviating, if you're not able to fulfill your requirement, then you can try to make a note or document it that you are doing this. This could be the best practice. And if you see this screenshot here, these are like summary of what not to be used in cloud development, what could be used in cloud development. For example, if you are doing a direct table access, use CDS, then question will come, there is no release CDS available you can create a wrapper CDS. Here I explained wrapper APIs. APIs could be anything. It's not only OData or SOAP API, which I'm talking about. If you're creating a class that is also, uh, and uh, with the restricted ABAP, then it also can account as an, you know, released API. Then if you are if you are using BAPI, then 
rep facades are available, but they are available from 2021, 2022 onwards. These are like rep view interfaces through which you can update, create, update, delete the, the standard applications. Then if you are using BOF, then we have rep business objects available. If you are using classical technologies, then you can choose to go into the Fury UI. If you are system access Y GUI, then system access Y ADT is available. Custom functions enhancement framework, then wait for released extension points for cloud development. I highlighted somewhere, yeah. So released extension points means released baddies, those you can utilize. So these are like general rules and these are not applicable for all the systems. It depends on which version you are. If you are in ECC, you will not be able to follow most of them, but at least you can write suitable enhancement in the system. Okay, let's start with workflows. What will be the workflow strategy? So if you are on S4, then you can start with the S4 HANA flexible workflow. This is the preferred way of building workflows because most of SAP's innovations will happen in this for on-prem world. Try to leverage standard flexible workflows available you can enhance them with an app extension or side-by-side -side if possible. <clears throat> it gives more power to the business user, less dependency on IT, which means it's clean core. And custom scenarios can also be built. So when you are in S4, let's say you are starting with Greenfield or if you are migrating also, then also you can choose flexible workflow for your you know, workflow requirements. And if flexible workflow is not suitable, if it's not able to cater all the requirements that you need, then you can choose SAP build process automation with workflow management. This will help you to build decoupled and intelligent workflows. It can give access to outside users as well if you have such kind of a requirement. You can use pre-built solutions from API Business Hub if you are building workflow management. Okay, they are free. A lot of documentation is given by SAP. You can use, utilize that or SAP store. Then business configure, uh, business user can configure, automate with less dependency on IT. This is again a clean core. Then keep in mind the costing of process automation or workflow service in BTP. Try with free tier first. I explained it earlier also, whenever you are opting for BTP service, you're developing anything, then try with free tier first if available, okay? And if above two are not suffice for your requirements, then you can choose SAP business workflow, which is there from a long time, SAP BPM. It will be a last resort for Greenfield, but yes, this can also be utilized. This is not deprecated. I believe anytime soon it will not deprecate. You can continue using these options. If there is no uh, flexible workflow available or there is a limitation with flexible workflow, because I've seen that FW has some limitations, then you can choose this. And if you are creating it in the fresh green field, then you can create your classes. Sometimes you have to create classes behind workflow containers or function groups and agent determination. You can try to refactor them with restricted above for stability. So these are the recommendations. These are the steps, or I would say options available with respect to clean core. I know whenever we are choosing S4 system, S4 HAN on-prem system, we want to utilize it first for our basic rights of requirements. If they, if they we will not be able to handle them properly in S4, or we have different requirements where we want to infuse intelligent technologies, then we have SAP build also, along with workflow management. So these are the recommendations for workflows. Then I'm moving towards the reports. So, Reports is like we have read-only app, read-only report, right? So now onwards, you can select a BAP cloud on stack, unmanaged managed query. This would be the preferred way of making a report. You can create everything from CDS till unmanaged query, and then you can put it into the Fury element layout. So this would be the preferred way. It will help you achieving the clean core. If this option is not helping you, then you can choose custom CDS view based on all data with Fury. You can create your custom CDS views. You can expose it as OData. Then we have NetWeaver Gateway OData with Fury. We can also create that in the system, although it's not that recommended because we have a BAP cloud in the picture now. But yes, if there are limitations which you are facing with the BAP cloud, for example, I was facing issues while 
implementing some solution btp web that i was not able to upload files and now it has been recently released then what i have to do i have to choose this option where we where we can utilize our netweaver gateway then the last option could be alv on top of cds or amdp if you are a big gui fan if you can't leave gui then this is an option but yes this will be on the will be the least priority when you're talking about read only applications or read only reports with respect to clean core now if you have transactional application let's say i'm covering here module pool okay so build your web cloud unmanage or manage bo try to use a strict mode because then it will enforce you to write certain syntax restricted syntax this would be the first preference then if it is not sufficient or not suffice your requirements then you can choose sap build apps a app guy were on top of s4 apis this will focus on business user but same save time for developers as well if developer is pro what that means it means developer has to be pro he should he or she should know about app guy or how it will work how it will connect to the back end with the help of you know btp destination and stuff so you need a lot of skills as well from the developer side to you know kick start this so but yes that transactional app can also be built with the app giver and it focuses on business user he or she can do that then the side by side extension or application you can build a custom report on top of s4 with the use of business application studio you can connect released apis or events if you want to decouple that report if you have such requirements then you can put it on btp then if you have an analytical kind of report then you can create custom analytical query inside s4 stack then if you want to make it with the wrap then analytical list page report is also available you can build it and if this will all not justify your requirements then you can use sac it's for the big reporting solutions you can connect with multiple sources this is something which is different from a bap so but i put it here then if all these options will not work for you although these are recommendations for clean core then classic is still there you can choose your classical way of doing work you don't want to leave your old gold you can create oops alv you can create webd in pro fm you can create module pool but make sure this could be your last resort i have to put them here because i want to be honest here most of the customers they are on to this if they will migrate into s4 they have to think about these things but yes there are there are certain complex requirements which you have built in your system you can refactor somehow and try to use try to follow general rules with respect to these as well then moving on to the interfaces try to use whitelisted released apis sorry for being repetitive but apis is something which is i have to say because this is an actual api here we are we talking about interfaces so standard soap or odata api you can directly integrate them with third party or integration capabilities like cpi if standard is justifying your requirements if not then you can extend it within app extensions then you can also choose if you are on s4 hana 99 onwards or 2020 onwards or equal to 2020 s4 hana then you can build custom wrapped web api and use them in the you know maybe sap integration suite or third party systems if this will not justify requirement then you can create custom on data on top of custom cds views this is also an option when you are building uh trying to create interfaces where you want to send data or want cpi to call your own data then the last one is wrapper rfc on top of peppy with custom logic rfcs are still used they are not going to deprecate or something but you can create a wrapper on top of peppy and then it can be called from the outside system so these are the options available with respect to the interfaces when you are implementing your clean core you can follow them then we have something called event based interfaces as well so you can utilize the latest feature provided by btp platform event mesh it's quite good 
uh, you can activate this service and it can be integrated with the integration suite. You can implement NetWeaver add-on and implement in a backend system and trigger these events. For example, if you're creating a business partner or sales order, then you can send those events and then it will land into the event mesh dashboard and then it can be utilized via CPI or maybe you have built some cap application or wrap application, it can be consumed there. Then we have standard IDOC. It's available from a long time, and I believe most of the people have experience into this. It is still applicable, it is still relevant. I'm not going to compare event mesh with standard IDOC because it is still part of framework, but yes, this could be the least priority as compared to event mesh, I would say, uh, because standard IDOCs, IDOCs creating a lot of logs in your backend system. So if you want to avoid these things, then try to choose event mesh and standard, else standard IDOC is also available. You can customize your IDOC as well, but if you are customizing, then try to follow those general rules, which I have highlighted. Then moving on to the conversions. Migration cockpit. This could be the most preferred way to load data into your system, into your S4 system. But yes, it is not covering everything. There are a lot of customized requirements from customers when they are loading their old data or maybe creating a fresh data bulk records into the SAP system. Then I thought of this second option, we can create custom web cloud application to upload data via wrap facades or wrapper APIs. So a web cloud is now having a feature to upload files, to upload Excels. So if we can make a program in such a way, application in such a way that it can connect with the wrap facade, which means standard wrap BO interfaces provided by SAP, we can do this upload as well from this web cloud feature. Then if you have decided in your project that there are certain processes which you are going to build in BTP, then you need to replicate your data into the BTP as well. Then custom programs. Sometimes you create custom programs, you write BAPIs inside it and you know, loading data into via those custom programs as well. So make sure you are creating released or wrapper classes or FMs if possible. I, sometimes you cannot avoid this. Although there is a recommendation to use RESTful BAP programming model, but still, if, if developer is, is not having that skill or this can be also utilized that you can create a custom program. Then the, the least to preferred option is LSMW or BDC. So these are not deprecated, but yes, try these options first and then choose this to maintain your technical depth or as well as your focus should be on utilizing the latest innovations from SAP with respect to clean core. Then we have enhancements. So in en enhancements, we can utilize in-app or key user extensions. These are like set of apps, which can be used at every level from the database till report, you can extend your uh, standard Fury apps. The use of, uh, use of is, uh, it's, it's increased in, you know, because we want to use these LCNC tools provided by SAP and it requires minimal coding. We need some. We need coding somewhere. For example, if we want to use cloud baddies, uh, if we are writing or building some custom field and logic app uh, using that app, and then we need uh, coding. There is a web editor available where you can write baddies, and they are easy to maintain and upgrade safe. And this is also a preferred way to start with the clean core. Once you got your S4 HANA system, activate this. This will be helpful. Then the second option is wrap extensions. This is something which is recently introduced along with a BAP cloud. You can extend your database table, your CDS, your behaviors as well. Check out standard wrap view interface in API hub under developer extensibility. You will find it that in API hub in developer extensibility section for S4 HANA cloud, you will find a lot of standard wrap view interfaces that you can utilize to do the enhancement then try to find release baddies from SAP or create custom ones. If, if, uh, if you are introducing some, you know, uh, some custom code in, in, the, in the point where 
you don't want to write direct custom code. For example, I'm trying to explain this point from here where we have exits, where we have implicit or explicit, explicit enhancements. Do it if nothing works, but write custom body and release it. Extend with BTP. This is for very specific purpose. Let's say if you want to send some data after saving, after having one event, let's say you have saved a sales order. Now you want to trigger something. You have some application in BTP or you want to run, let's say you want to run a CPI flow. So you can extend your stuff with this. But yes, when this, this, this will be our spe special focus here because implicit and explicit uh, enhancements have been you know, widely used by everyone. And we have done a lot of coding around it, but try to use custom body if you, are, if you want to follow the clean core principle. Then forms in S4 world, try to use output management. This will help you and it's business user friendly as well. And your in-app extensions will help you here for configuring output management, for example, forms. Then if this will not help you, then choose NACE. It is still there, although it is not recommended, but there are certain limitations with the output management, then you can choose NACE to configure your output forms. You can create your cloud, cloud application as well using Adobe Forms. I have not personally tried this, but I believe this feature will definitely be there where we will create a web cloud application and call the Adobe Forms. Then the last one is BTP application with form service. So these are the options with respect to forms if you want to achieve a clean core. Okay, this is my last slide. I have covered RISERS. Then what will be the typical challenges and possible solutions for CC implementation that I want to cover? Upskilling of an ABAP developer. Yes, it's a challenge. We have to overcome this challenge by learning RESTful ABAP programming model. Then a developer can upskill himself or herself by tracking SAP technologies via free learning resources like learning.sap, community, open.sap, tech ed. And we also need to understand the personas. Everything is not relevant for the developer. Certain things, for example, SAP build apps or SAP build process automation is targeting business users or key users. But yes, developer can also help can also learn this. So try to understand personas so that you can suggest relevant solution to your customer. We need to upskill ourselves into that area also. Then the second challenge is, is skills of S4 HANA stack. You can start small, try to use restricted ABAP code in the program, demo ABAP versions. There is a 38 program available. You can go inside the program and check how it is doing also. If you try to write code into that and choose a BAP, cloud, uh, a BAP for cloud development there, then you will see that whether your code will work or not. You can try that out. Then you can try to find whitelist your released APIs in S4. It's available in there, there in uh, standard CDS view. You can check them out. What is available for your on-premise version system. Then check out the ATC variants with respect to cloud. Most of us are working on S4, but we never tried using ATC variants, which are relevant for cloud, which I've explained in the SAP, uh, sorry, in the general rules. Then aware of upgrade stable options like key user extensions. It's available in T code as well, like SCFD underscore registry. So try to enable them from the day one in your project. Even if it is, you think that it will not be required or no one is asking you to do it, but try to do it, try to activate it. Then only you can leverage it then knowledge of BTP. You can gain knowledge around BTP from Discovery Center, developer.sap.com. These two sites are very helpful. You can choose any mission from Discovery Center as per your requirement and see what all steps have been followed. And you can do your practicals from developer.sap.com. So knowledge of BTP is very much relevant when you are implementing a clean core because there are certain solutions, requirements 
that you don't want to build your know, backend system and decouple them with the help of PTP. So these are the challenges which I thought of and the possible solutions which I can think of. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this cool presentation. Um, Thanks, Soren. <laughs> I, I had some some questions. Ah, the the first question, um, the, or, the, or the funny story, the Nast Nazi theme, <laughs> a topic. <laughs> um, I, I heard that, that uh, it it was communicated by SAP. Mm -hmm. Several years before that, uh, on S for Hana, uh, um, NAS Nazi will no longer be supported. Everyone right. heard about, and two years or one or two years later, there was a clear statement. This just was misinformation, and it's completely wrong. But mm -hmm. almost no one heard about it. <laughs> Is this <laughs> right? I, I heard it as, uh, six yes. months before, or something like this. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Because when I'm working in output management, uh, you know, for configuring forms or emails, so there are certain limitations which I found, and even in notes they they have written it. Okay, choose NAST. So, <laughs> so obviously when you're working in the live project, you will face the situation that you will not be able to solve with this. Then obviously you will choose your old way of doing right. So that's why I've <laughs> I'm putting my bullet points in such a way. Okay, try to choose this. If this will not help you, then choose this and track mm -hmm. whatever you are doing. That's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, other question from my side? Uh, um, not fun, I, no. I, I have, have one. A, a different question than some that for something completely different. What's the font type you're using for your? Font type, <laughs> this one you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how it will look into YouTube or um, it's uh, Comic Sense. Yeah. Comic, comic sense. yeah, comic sense. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, so, uh, uh, this should get you into a, a personal a hell of for several people that hate comic sense. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I found it cool. I mean, I was comfortable, so that's why I put it. And obviously, uh, I mean, I'm not a regular YouTuber or you know organizing mm -hmm. content like this, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel, uh, I mean, I feel it cool, so I put it. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Uh, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 